Welcome back to our safety talk on drill press safety and in this video we're going to be talking about how to mount a bit into the drill press. Now before we can begin talking about mounting your drill bits into the drill press let's take a second to just talk about orienting yourself to the full drilling process that you're going to undergo. Let's say we want to drill a hole, a large hole like this. We can't just simply mount this in the drill press and drill with this bit. The first thing is, is that these drill bits have a flat spot on the tip. So any drill bit has a little flat point and the bigger the bit, the bigger the flat point. And on a very small diameter bit, the flat spot is so small that it's almost non-existent. And that's important because when we try to drill through a piece of steel, that flat spot is gonna stop us from making our way through the material. So what we first would have to do is pierce a small hole all the way through the steel and then begin to enlarge slowly in steps enlarge that hole if we try to take too big of a step so for instance let's remove the two middle ones if we try to go from a small hole like this one eighth hole up to something that's closer to a half an inch the amount of work that this drill bit would have to do in order to drill through there is quite significant it would be removing quite a lot of material it's just too hard on the bits. It actually ends up taking longer doing it that way. So my expectation is that we would step up our holes slowly. It would take four bits to make that drilling operation properly in this shot. Now, I've also got a drill gauge set up here so that if you are trying to select proper drill bits, that you can use a drill gauge in order to see what size the bits that you're using are. Because often when you try to read the drill bit, it's been worn off. So to use a drill gauge, you simply place your drill bits into these holes until it meets a hole that it can't go into. So that would mean if it fits into this one but not this, then here's where we're at. This one says 9 64ths, okay? So it does not fit into the 1 8 hole. This guy here, just keep staircasing down. It doesn't fit into the 7 16th, it does fit into the 29 64ths. Nice and snug, so that's the 29 64ths. And if I was to read the label, it says 2964 so right on the label there. Now measuring your drill bits with a drill gauge is not the only way to do it. Some of these drill bits are too large to fit into a drill gauge or they are metric, letter, or number drills. So they don't fit the standard fractional drill bit gauge. So another way to do it is to use digital calipers. You grab yourself a digital caliper and you would close it Make sure it's zeroed and set it to inches or millimeters depending on what you're after. So in this case, I'll go to inches and zero it. And I'm just going to measure the drill bit right here at the end of the flutes. And this says 0.866. So that is a way of getting a decimal amount just by using digital calipers. Now let's talk about these two guys right here. Now, before you can drill a hole, you need to start by locating that hole on your material. So I would make my measurements on my material and I would then put a mark on your actual material by scratching it. I would scratch that mark in with a scribe and then I would use the center punch to actually punch a hole. Not a hole, but a small little divot. One good whack with the center punch, and you should have a small divot that locates the hole. And that's going to make sure that when we start our drilling operation, we have something that we can actually aim for, and our drill bit will actually fall down into that divot so that we know that we're hitting it in the right spot. Now, once you've done a center punch, the very next bit that you want to start your drilling operation with is this guy here. This is a center drill. It's double-ended so that you have, you know, twice as much use out of one. As this wears or breaks, you can use the other end. And this is a short and stubby bit. And the reason for that is it doesn't flex and it doesn't bend. So that when you start your drilling operation with a short, stubby bit, it will locate that hole and you know that you're not flexing the bit to try to hit that in your setup. It will help you to clamp and set up your drilling operation on center. 
So you always start with a center drill and you want to drill your hole so that the very beginning tip of this center drill is all the way into your material and that you also engage some of the shoulder. So in the end, and you'll see once we start drilling, you should have a funnel shape that is created in your material and that funnel will help to guide these subsequent bits. So that's what you need to know about the bit selection that it would take for you to make a hole of this size. You would actually need all of these uh, to be used from start to finish. Drill bit. So I've got my material here. I've got a center punch mark that I'm going to be drilling on. I've got it mounted in the top ledge of this vise. And when I look at my largest diameter bit, I can see that I don't run any risk of drilling into the actual jaws of the vise. So, so far, so good. I've also extended my my extra material out so that it crashes into the post, which will stop this from spinning, which is a good approach. If it's long enough to do so, I recommend doing it. I've got some a clamp ready here to do some clamping. I'm gonna position my material, but before I do that, I'm gonna install the first bit. First bit is always this short center drill. So it's time to remove the bit that's in here. We have a chuck key and the chuck keys live on the side of these drill presses in their holder. Okay, we call that the home. So the chuck key is in its home. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm not going to let it go. We'll talk about that in a second here. The chuck key goes in and I'm going to turn counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten. So counterclockwise loosens this off. I'm also holding on to the bit because if I don't hold on to the bit, it will just fall out and it will hit its tip on my metal. And that can wear these bits out and even break these bits because they are hard and brittle. So make sure you hold the bit, turn counterclockwise, that's been released. I'm gonna place my center drill in and I'm gonna make sure that I chuck it up as far as I can without coming onto these flutes here. These flutes, you don't wanna clamp on them, so I'm gonna stay just back from that. So place this in, uh, turn the sleeve by hand until it opens up big enough. Insert and check that I'm not clamping on the flutes. Tighten down by hand and insert the chuck key and go clockwise this time. Notice I did not let go of the chuck key at any time. There's three holes. I'm going to tighten all three holes. And I'm going to spin by hand to see if that drill bit looks like it's centered. If it's not centered, when I spin by hand, it's going to get a wobble going on and I'll have to make the adjustment. Now, still holding onto the chuck key, I place it back and that's when I let go. We have a rule. And the rule is simple. The chuck key is either in your hand or it's in the home. The chuck key cannot end up in your pocket. It can't end up on the table. And the most dangerous place for that chuck key to be is left in the machine like that. That's very dangerous because if I turn the machine on right now, that will fly out fast enough that it could actually kill somebody. So again, chuck key is either in the hand or in the home, develop a habit of not wanting to let it go.